This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Continuing with our selection set series, I want to look at two more selection tools. And both of them are on the edit pull down. The first is select all, and the second is select by attributes. Select all first. If I click on Select All right now, notice that every element in my design has been selected. Now this means every element, whether you can see the element or not. So in other words, elements on levels which are turned off, and elements which are construction type elements which may not be visible at the moment are also selected, which may or may not be what you want. So this is a powerful tool but just be sure you understand exactly what you're selecting. I will left click to undo that selection set. The second tool is select by attributes. And here we can select by a multitude of criteria. For example, in the types box here, we see every type of microstation element. By default, they're all selected. But we can select individual items right now. Just line is selected as the selection criteria. And if I click on Execute, which will actually apply the filters, every line in the view is selected. I'll unselect that. Let's try something different. Let's try, say, Arcs and Execute. Now, only the Arcs are part of a selection set. Left click. You can select several different items, if you wish, at one time. There's no restriction on the number of values that you can set. You can select by level. At the moment, no levels are selected. But let's say I leave the arcs on and click on, say, the fixtures level. Now I have a combination of fixtures and arcs. So click on execute will only find arcs on the fixtures level. Let's see what happens. It finds the arc on the bathtub symbol. But that's all. This is the only arc that exists on the fixtures level. Unselect that. I can select all elements on a specific level. Let's select all elements. And let's click on the doors level. So now any element on the doors level should be selected. And we see all the doors plus the door number symbols. To clear the selections, for example, I don't want to use a level selection. With the cursor in that box, right click and click on Select None. Same with the elements, right click, select None. And now I can select by other methods. For example, I can select by color, or style, or weight, or combinations of all three. And obviously, combinations of the symbology, plus a level, plus an element type. The mode here. Inclusive means select the elements that meet the criteria that I set. And exclusive means select everything other than the criteria that I've set. In other words, a reverse selection. Inclusive is the normal default. And you can essentially ignore the second set of options and the third set of options. Most of the time, you simply want the inclusive selection. There are other things you can do, for example, Click on Settings. You can select cells and shared cells. We're not discussing cells in this course. But you can select text, which opens a separate dialog box, where you can select font type, height, width, justification, and a text string. Let's click on String. Let's enter a piece of text. I'm going to type in Opening. I will also select the text level and text in the element type. And click on Execute. And now if I zoom into the drawing, you'll see that this text string has highlighted. And notice that I only typed in opening, not the full text string. It will find partial text strings. There's one opening. That one is selected too. The single opening text is selected there. 
and this whole text string is selected. So it selects all instances of that particular text string. Now, one last thing. When you close this box, you're given a warning. And the warning simply says, if you click on OK, you will allow Select By to continue to filter the location or display of elements. In other words, the text string that we've just selected will remain selected if I click on OK. If I click on Cancel, then that text string selection set will disappear. Now normally, having selected an element or elements, you want to do something with those elements. And that's usually an editing operation of some kind. So you need the selection set to remain active. So you click on OK. And if we zoom in again, you'll see that the text is still highlighted. If I had clicked on Cancel, that text would now be unhighlighted and not selected. Now, you need to practice this, of course. This is a very powerful tool, the Select by Attributes tool. And it solves a lot of very specific selection problems. Now let's look at one last thing. Having made a selection set, it's often very useful to turn that selection set into a permanent selection set. Because if you've noticed so far, all the selection sets with all the methods we've used are temporary. As soon as we data point in the screen, the selection set disappears, which is fine for individual editing operations. But quite often, we need to keep a permanent selection set. For example, this symbolism here, which symbolizes shingles on the roof. At the moment, these are all individual elements, as you can see. Each one highlights as I move my cursor over them. Now, this symbol is fairly common. And I would like to save it for other drawings in this set. But I'd like the elements to be together. And I don't really want a collection of individual elements. So what we'll do is we'll make a selection set of those elements. And we'll press Control and G at the keyboard. G is for group. What we've done is make a group of those individual elements. And you can tell it's a group by the handles surrounding the group. If I left click now on the screen, the selection set disappears, but this is a group. And if I pick it up and move it, it moves as a group. And it will stay as a group until I ungroup it. So let me put that back where it belongs. And to ungroup, you select a group, press Control U for ungroup, and we now have our individual elements back again. Extremely useful tool, and I use this a lot. You can make as many groups as you wish in a design. There's no limit at all. And groups make for easy transportation between drawings, which I also find extremely useful. Keep in mind that there are other ways of permanently grouping elements, but we won't discuss those in this course. As always, please practice the tools we have used in this video.